Huh? Achilles, we have to go now. Everybody on? Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. No yelling on the bus. Cronexia and the Eight Seals is an indie anime produced by Mr. Cronexia. He's an anime YouTuber with a very large fan base. So large, in fact, that he was essentially able to crowdfund the show's production costs. Now, he adapted it from a series of books that he wrote and self-published on Amazon. However, Cronexi is hardly even worth being reviewed as a piece of animation, because, if you can't already tell, it looks like absolute trash. And, spoiler alert, it doesn't just look like trash, it is trash. But I'll get more into that later. I won't talk about the animation too much, though, because, believe it or not, that's not even the worst part. No. The worst part about Grenexia is that it seemingly has no worst part. All of its parts are somehow equally bad and come together to congeal into a sort of gray amorphous blob of mediocrity. Suffice it to say that the animation itself is stiff. Outside of fight scenes, the characters' movements are repetitive and lack the fluidity one would expect from a contemporary piece of animation. There's this scene in the first episode, right, where three characters who we know nothing about and thus don't care about are running through a forest trying to get to those eagles from the Lord of the Rings, and their run looks absolutely terrible. Everyone's going on a full sprint, but they're just flailing their arms around, and it gets even worse when, for whatever reason, the camera shifts to like a top-down perspective, wherein all the characters look like wacky arm-flailing inflatable tube men, and nobody looks like they have any mass either. It's all just really bad and choppy looking, and I could go on and on and on and on about the animation, but I won't, because everybody already has. Everyone's already talked about how bad Cronexia and the Eight Seals looked. Literally everyone. Uh, even Missy himself had to come out and acknowledge how bad it looks. But here's the thing. Better animation won't make Chronexia good. Better animation might make it better, but it won't make it good. And this is the case for a very simple reason. Chronexia and the Eight Seals refuses to ground itself in anything that a sensible human could possibly care about. It presents us with a setting that is, for lack of a better term, bland. How many times have you read, watched, or played something that placed you in a world wherein humans and several subspecies of humans all coexist in perfect peace until suddenly one random asshole or assholes disrupts the social order? Suddenly. And then said asshole threatens to take slash break or fuse with the MacGuffin. But it's fine, because our unambiguously good and morally upright heroes rise to the occasion to stop him. Maybe one of the heroes even dies and gets to have his dramatic last words whilst bleeding out in one of his comrades' arms or something. One of those moments, you know? You could probably think of at least a dozen other things that fit that description to a T. But telling an interesting story in a cliché setting isn't even impossible. Take The Walking Dead, for example. It takes place in the zombie apocalypse, one of the most overused settings imaginable. And yet somehow it still manages to tell a compelling story. Why is that? Hmm. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret as to why. It's the characters. You know, them characters. Them things with the feelings who's the thing in the narrative that move the plot along. You see, people get invested in the characters. And, they, and thus are pulled into the plot and the setting and thus become invested in the world. So with all of that in mind, I'd like to ask you something. Who's your favorite character in Cronexia and the Eight Seals? And if you're somehow able to answer that question, here's a follow-up. Describe that character without using aspects of their physical appearance or by telling us their role in the narrative. Who are they? I find the characters to be rather, well, flat. Lacking in any notable personality traits beyond generic anime cliches, and likewise, I find their motivations to be lacking. They fight Vince, yeah, blonde murder man's name is Vince, because he wants to destroy the world and they don't want to die. That's a relatable motivation, I guess, but I'd hardly call it unique. Nobody wants to die. The fear of death is practically universal. They fight evil because they're good, and they're good because they fight evil. The writer's internal logic is as circular as it is baffling. Cronexia and the Eight Seals asks the viewer to buy into several absurd premises, which I will list for you now. 1. 
Vince is an evil maniac who wants to destroy the world for ostensibly no reason at all. Two, the gods of mana are absurd, and even though they also live there, they do not care about the fate of the world. Even though the entire world is at stake, only about a dozen people could even be bothered to do anything about it. I may have neglected to mention this earlier, but I'm psychic, so I already know what you're going to say. This is the first episode. They'll explain more on the characters and story later. It's okay that nothing makes any fucking sense now because it's only the first episode. Because apparently now it's okay for the first episode of something to be bad. The first episode should be spectacular. It should draw people in and get them excited for more. The first episode should be something of a barometer for how a series is going to go. And judging by this, Kate's is going to be a fucking train wreck. Cronexia and the Eight Seals is bland and illogical. It struggles to even abide by its own internal logic. Its setting is bland, its characters are bland, and I'm going to make a psychic prediction here and say that its plot's probably going to be pretty bland too. If Kate's was a serial, it would probably be Raisin Bland. 2 out of 10.